All right, and there we go. Welcome to another episode of Talking College Football with J.J. Kitchen. Of course, I'm your host, J.J. Kitchen. Guys, a big day for multiple reasons. One, we went over 1,000 subscribers. So again, that I'm beyond thankful for each and every one of you who tune into the show. The Sunday conversation, we moved it to Monday because of Easter. Obviously, I enjoyed Easter Sunday. Hope you all did for everyone who uh, who embraces and celebrates Easter Sunday. Wanted to move it to Monday. Um, this weekly live session has become so much fun. Uh, the amount of people that jump on board and, and, and ask questions and and really just create a community. So I'm really appreciative of all of you guys and what you do to make this channel what it is. Uh, getting over a thousand is a big deal. And again, I'm beyond thankful. If you haven't already yet, though, like and subscribe to the channel. We got over a thousand. The goal now is to get to two thousand. So again, I'm beyond thankful for each and every one of you. Please like and subscribe to the channel. But of course, before we get into it, guys, a big day again. We talked about a thousand subscribers to the channel, but Alliance Four One Two, man, they dropped a big, massive bomb. Uh, if you are a four one Alliance Four One Two subscriber from Royal on up, you are invited to the closed scrimmage. This Saturday, that is a massive deal. Um, you know, <laughs> I think that most people would understand if, if you're going, if you're invited to a, a closed scrimmage, you're going to see quite a bit, probably more than what you'll see on uh, any other Saturday. Uh, that's for sure, especially to the, the the spring game coming up, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Getting to go this Saturday is a big deal. You're going to see a lot more. Obviously, uh, I will be there. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Watch the watch it live. Uh, it'd be cool not to have to listen to sources or anything, just get it firsthand and, get, and getting to be able to see these guys and, and see them and how they play and, and how they react and how the offense is coming along. Um, so it's going to be interesting. But before we get into the topics of today, guys, of course, the show is sponsored by Colonial Beer, located at 4986 Library Road in Bethel Park, PA, 15102. Guys, of course, as always, it's run by two great pit men, uh, people I've known for a long time. Uh, incredible people, small business, always support small business, especially if it's run and owned and operated by Pittman. Of course, you can go in there and they have a multitude of different options between your, your heavy loggers, your light loggers, your IPAs. The place is massive, obviously, for any parties you're having. It's the place to go, but more importantly, to go pick up the fake slide, which is a, a great, great can, of course, great design. As you can see here, Oakland Originals. And, of course, the fake slide which helps support pay the players. And it goes to Alliance 412, which is a preferred collective of the University of Pittsburgh. Obviously, again, guys, go ahead and see Colonial Beer, located at 4986 Library Road in Bethel Park, PA, 15102. All right, guys, before we get into it here, some comments here. Of course, always the first one in here, WRW Pitt. Smash the like button, please. Smash the like button if you have not already done so. If you're on YouTube or if you're on YouTube, still go over to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and hit the like button. Always appreciated. And congrats, you went over 1,000. I know, beyond pumped. Adam, the scrimmage is a great idea. Is it true that no Alliance money is going to the basketball team? Uh, no, uh, that's not true. Uh, I can promise you Alliance 412 money is going to the basketball team. I can, I can promise you that. Uh, they're certainly throwing out a good bit of money. Obviously, they're working on. Um, from what I can understand, working on keeping Bub Carrington guys on that roster right now, but also, too, they're extremely active in the transfer portal right now. I can promise you this. Uh, behind closed doors, there is plenty, a plenty of going on uh, in terms of the transfer portal and the NCAA for basketball. Uh, Pitt is extremely active right now and working to acquire players through the portal. Um, I can promise you that right now. Alliance 412 is busy, and obviously the Pitt coaching staff, Jeff Capel and all of them are extremely busy as well. But so is pit football. And here we are today. Obviously, the big thing that came out today, and I'm going to try to share my screen here uh, to show it to you guys. Obviously, the, the big news of the day, um, and we'll get into, obviously, um, we'll get into the scrimmages and talking about depth charts and stuff like that today. But I want to jump in here real quick. Let me see here if I can get this off of here. Here. And I'm going to share my screen with you guys to show you exactly if you're not on Twitter. Uh, here is the actual tweet. If I can pull it up here, that'd be great. Let's 
let's see here. Share, Alliance. All right, there we go. So the tweet of the day. Alliance 412, didn't make the cut. Sign up or upgrade your membership today. Obviously here, Alliance 412 brings up Pit Football. Would like to invite all Royal, Gold, and Premium members to attend this team scrimmage this Saturday, April 6th at 10 a.m. at Acrisure Stadium. Come see the 2024 Panthers in action. More details will be provided via email soon. As you can see here, closed football scrimmage, guys. Of course, you know, anytime, you know, personally, me, I think this is a great idea uh, from Alliance 412 and what they've done. See, see if I can actually get a little bit bigger for you guys, actually. I know it's a little hard to see a little bit. There we go. Yeah. So, again, I really do like what Alliance 412 is doing here, guys. Um, it's an opportunity to really reward the people who have been subscribed to Alliance 412. Um, if you're not subscribed to Alliance 412, I would certainly say, um, you know, subscribe today. It's a great investment. Obviously, it goes to everything that you invest into Alliance 412 goes to the players 100%. Obviously, Chris Bickle has done um, one hell of a job. Obviously, uh, John Pelusi, uh, Goldberg has done an incredible job. You know, these guys have been working their tails off, obviously, for pit football and pit basketball. We've seen numerous people jump on board. Uh, subscriptions are starting to climb. Uh, I, I would think today this is a massive, massive deal, um, you know, to reward people who, if you can imagine Pat Narduzzi at this point, he's probably going, you know, what the hell? You know, we're going to have people watching us, you know, in a closed scrimmage. Obviously, uh, you're, you're going to see a lot on Saturday. Whoever's going, if you are able to go, uh, you'll see a lot of what this team's going to look like, probably more than what you'd see at the actual spring game. So I can tell you this, this is going to be a heck of an opportunity for people to go in there and watch the game, um, especially, too, it's going to be at Acrister Stadium, obviously, from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, this is just a great way to just get things going at Alliance 412. Obviously, uh, they've done a great job up to this point. Uh, but guess what? In business, no matter what, you're never satisfied. There's always room to improve, and this is one of them. And I think this is a tremendous job on their end and what they do on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I'm well connected with you know co uh, collectives around the country. Uh, Alliance 412 certainly works their tail off. Uh, this is a massive deal in terms of getting people to subscribe, but more importantly, rewarding the people, rewarding people who subscribe. And I, and I tried telling you guys, obviously, I knew this was coming down the pipe. Um, this is a big deal. Um, it, it's been it's been truly great to see. Getting to some of the comments here. The scrimmage idea is great. Is it true New Alliance money is going in that we talked about that one? What's your one thing you're looking for during the scrimmage? Uh, one of the things I'm going to be looking for during the scrimmage um, is the offense. I think that's really the biggest point. You know, obviously, I'll be watching the defensive, watching some of the youth movement that's going on, the Braylon Lovelaces of the world, uh, obviously, P.J. O'Brien, Donovan McMillan, uh, but obviously, too, Jesse Anderson, uh, Cruz Brookins, watching them watching the defensive line. What are we going to see in terms of the defensive line this year? But also, too, the offense. What does the pace look like? It's now going to be the second scrimmage. The, obviously, previously yesterday, what we talked about, or last week we previously talked about how the offense was struggling to get the, you know, it's only been a couple weeks, but getting the pace down. That's kind of one of the things they're currently still working on. Um, from what I've been hearing, obviously, this week uh, and previously going into last week, obviously, they saw a lot of improvement in terms of the speed of the offense, in terms of, uh, the adjustments, uh, the pace they're looking to go at. Obviously, you're going to be seeing a lot of what Pitt will be doing this year in terms of the speed, in terms of getting to the football, uh, not wasting any time, looking to the sideline, RPOs. I mean, it's going to be exciting to actually watch 2024, you know, modern day football. It's going to be great to see Pitt adapt. And I think Pat Narduzzi deserves a lot of credit for hiring, you know, Cade Bell, a guy who's a young guy. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny saying young guy. You know, he's, he's just a year older than me. And someone who's going to bring a lot of energy to this program and anybody I've talked to, and we'll get into a couple of players, but obviously too, in the running back room, Rodney Hammond is your go-to number one guy, but man, Derek Davis is having himself a camp. Uh, you know, Lindsey Lamar comes in and it's almost like, you know, Derek Davis has just received new life. You know, the former five-star recruit out of gateway went to LSU out of high school and then transferred from LSU to, to Pitt to play more of running back. He could have played running back at LSU, but wanted to come home, be closer to home. Uh, that's always big. Um, but, man, he's having a hell of a camp at this point, so you love to hear that. Uh, the offensive line, you're starting to see some guys separate themselves. 
Um, you know, a lot of guys working in and out in certain positions. You know, Lyndon Cooper working at guard, but also center. Uh, there's a high likelihood that you'll see him at center at the beginning of the year. Um, just a veteran guy out of NC State to transfer, Lyndon Cooper. Um, a lot to like. There's a lot of stuff going on, but I think this is a really big thing for Alliance 412. If you are not subscribed to Alliance 412 and you want to be invited to this stuff, go over to Alliance 412. Go look at the previous uh, shows that we've done, Sunday Conversations. Uh, any live Sunday conversation, you can go in there and see. Uh, we've done a tutorial on terms of going to Alliance 412 picking up subscription that you would want to go to that fits your budget and fits your needs uh, and certainly help provide an opportunity to keep pick competitive. And more importantly, whether it's football or basketball, it certainly helps in any certain way. And anything you can donate is always appreciative because Alliance 412 is the preferred collective of the University of Pittsburgh. Harry Beaver, WVU, West Virginia Backyard Brawl forever. I hear you, man. Excited for the game this year. Chicken 1515, obviously an Oklahoma Sooner fan. JJ, what's going on, man? I appreciate you subscribing and always tuning into the shows. Mike, one position you see football locking in on after spring ball. Um, Do you mean like in the transfer portal? Uh, Let me know what you mean, Mike, by that. Uh, But I think maybe after, uh, if you're looking for the portal, I would think maybe defensive line with Nate Temple going down for the year. Uh, I see them going after potentially a defensive lineman whether it's defensive end or defensive tackle. Um, but one guy who's really stepping up so far, which from what I've heard, is Nakai Johnson. Man, him moving from outside to inside has been just light years ahead. Uh, he's done a hell of a job this year. You know, you're looking at guys like Sean Fitzsimmons. He'll be a star this year. He'll be a guy that's playing a lot. I project him to be a starter. You get Nakai Johnson in there. Obviously, Isaiah Ghost Neal, another guy that's in there. Uh, Nick James, another guy that's in there you got a lot of young talent. Francis Brayu, a true freshman. I think you're going to see a lot of him this year. He's starting to surprise people. He's built already like a like a sophomore, a true sophomore, true uh, true junior, which is wild to even think about some of the photos coming out of camp. Um, he's done a hell of a job. Elliot Donald has really proved, is starting to prove himself here in this camp. Uh, a guy who this, just last week just talked about how he's really starting to tune it up. Um, I think it's where we're kind of starting, what we're starting to look for and what we're looking to. Boomer Sooner, of course. Horns down. So which Alliance commercials have been your favorite? Big Steve, what's going on, man? Damn, Steve, honestly, I'd say all of them. I'll tell you what, your acting skills, brother, it's not even acting at this point. It's kind of natural for you, brother. You're hitting home runs every single time, man. I love watching the commercials, man. I hope they continue. I think they're a great job. It shows people the light behind uh, not just the athletes, but also the fans, man. Uh, I certainly hope you continue to do the commercials and Alliance 412 comes up with more ideas. Um, the bathroom one was pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. And then, of course, too, uh, you jumping up, you getting up on the chair and, and saying, let's go. That was always a good one. Um, but all of them in general, man, I, I thought that, you know, that you've done a hell of a job and appreciative for everything you, you do. But more importantly, appreciative of what you do and Alliance 412. It's, it's been a hell of a job. Um, subscriptions are going up. Pitt is extremely competitive in the NIL market, um, but like any great business, you're looking to get better. And I, I know Pitt can do better. I know the Alliance 412 can do better. It just takes all of us to really support. That's really what it comes down to. Help support your team. Helps all athletes. Amen, brother. Mike, I hope Darvo doesn't move the O-line around as much as Borbs. Mike, from what I'm hearing, uh, you know, Darvo is uh, kind of actually like the opposite of Borbs. He believes in guys creating – um, a lot of continuity on the offensive line. That's kind of what we've heard out of camp. Um, obviously, Ryan Jacoby, I expect him to be a starter at left guard. Uh, he has not seen any live action at all. Obviously, coming off an injury, you don't want to risk him getting hurt. Um, I really do see him as a, as a starting uh, offensive lineman going out of camp into the fall. I expect him to be a big part this year. Uh, left tackle, obviously, you see Branton Taylor at left guard. Ryan Jacoby, um, I would say at center right now, I'd say Lyndon Cooper or Terrence Moore. I think they're battling at this point. I'd be good with Terrence Moore as well because, one, he has shown himself to be a great center. I think Pitt's lucky to have two guys that can play the center position. Uh, Lyndon Cooper can also play guards, the guard spaces. Uh, at right guard, I expect to see B.J. Williams get to be the true sophomore, uh, be the starting right guard. And then at right tackle, you have you know Ryan Bayer, who just, it just uh, it's an absolute specimen. Uh, a, a guy that just, you know, when you look at the prototypical offensive lineman, uh, NFL offensive tackle, he looks like it. He's built like it, has the work ethic, uh, certainly studies a lot of film. 
Uh, you love to hear that out of camp. Um, it, it's been a good job. But I think at this point right now, one of the things that they're still working on and I'm excited to see on Saturday is the pace of play. What does the pace look like? What does Are they improving? What does the improvements look like each and every scrimmage? Because it is a new offense. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to be critical of this team and be critical of, you know, anything they do in camp because right now they're teaching. J.J. Laster, the, the new wide receiver coach, uh, talked about how they're just trying to get the speed down at this point and they'll teach the, and, co- and correct and make the corrections in the classroom when they're meeting with the players, which I absolutely love. Uh, J.J. Laster is a guy that I think he coaches hard and loves the players hard. Um, you know, he's a guy that truly wants to be there for his players. Um, certainly, I love his philosophy. I love what he does. Um, overall, I think it's just it's a great fit, um, and it's a youth movement. And you've seen Jacob Bronowski, a guy who's been known as a, from behind closed doors as a home run hire, um, obviously a special teams coordinator of the year. He's done a hell of a job. He's created great relationships in the tight end room. Uh, as you see on the screen there, you know, I expect to see Gavin Bartholomew have a hell of a year in this offense, and especially high paced, getting more plays in than, than, than usual, not, you know, not huddling up as much. Uh, he's going to be effective, and I expect him to have a big year and be very competitive to terms where he plays and he does a hell of a job that, that he competes for the NFL spots. And I'm not, and I'm not even talking about a day three spot. I'm talking about a day two pick at least. So I'm excited to watch him. Chicken doesn't matter who your team is. These kids work harder through through F practice school than any ever uh, any other average working person. So they enjoy watching them girls and men play to entertain our passion. Support all. Amen, brothers. Support the players. Subscribe to Alliance 412. Big news again out of Alliance 412. If you are a royal, gold, or premium subscriber, you are going to be getting an email to be invited to the closed scrimmage this Saturday behind closed doors at Akershire Stadium. Uh, it's going to be a hell of an atmosphere uh, getting to watch this team in the spring. You'll see a little bit more, obviously, because it's closed. No TV, no cameras, nothing. Uh, it's going to be fun, and I will be down there, and it'll be a lot of fun to watch this. Support, support, support. To all Pitt fans, JJ is complete, knowledgeable, college football person. Like, share, sub, support. We need more like him and, and ball. If he was a Sooner, he'd have 50,000 subs. Chicken, I appreciate you, man. And, and again, um, just want to, you know, because we obviously, we're coming up on 100 people watching live right now. Um, just want to thank each and every one of you subscribers. Um, this show is nothing without you guys. The Sunday conversation has become elite. Um, it's been a lot of fun because when I've gotten to meet you guys through the TV screen um, and through, obviously, the podcast, obviously, I'm still working. I have contacted Permanis in the South Fayette area. Um, it's a very big, it's a much larger uh, Permanis than the, the, usually the other ones. Um, I'm going to work on getting an, an in-person, an in-person meet and greet. The Talking College Football community, Talking College Football with JJ Kitchen community, uh, working to get that together. I will give you guys a date. I would like to meet all of you in person. Uh, that kind of stuff means a lot to me uh, when you support something that I do. Uh, but more importantly, with college football and Pitt, obviously supporting Pitt football, um, I'm appreciative. And I want to meet you guys. I want to have conversations. I want to meet each and every one of you in person. Know what your hobbies are, what you love to do. Um, when did you first become a Pitt fan? What do you like about Pitt? What you don't like about Pitt? How can we make things better? Uh, what do you want to see on the channel? That kind of stuff matters to me. So I cannot wait. Uh, I will be releasing that hopefully soon. I've contacted again. I've contacted Permanis in South Fayette. Um, they've done a hell of a job. So I, I'm a very appreciative um, of them working with me. It's a much larger Permanis than around anywhere else in the country, uh, especially in, in, uh, in uh, the state, obviously. Um, and we're working to get that done. But obviously, a meet and greet with the Talking College Football with JJ Kitchen community. Um, I'm looking to get that live. So we'll be working on that, and I will be posting that on Twitter. Um I'll be creating a Facebook page, obviously, for Talking College Football with J.J. Kitchen, but also, too, I'll be posting it on YouTube uh, in the comments section and as a post, so you guys will be able to be notified. Again, if you are not subscribed yet, subscribe to the channel and like the video. It always helps the algorithm gets more of it out. But obviously, too, if you are subscribed and you have the notifications on, you'll know when we go to meet and when we have that live event at Permanis. So if you want to know when that live event is, subscribe to the channel hit the notifications and like the video and chicken. I, I appreciate it, man. I, you know, uh, yeah, chicken is a follower from Oklahoma Sooners, obviously with Jason Watkins and coach over at, um, 
um, the Hall of Fame College Football Podcast with Coach and uh, Jason Watkins. And again, appreciate everything they do. If you haven't subscribed to their channel, please do. Mark, agree, chicken. We are very lucky to have JJ. Mark, I beyond appreciate that, man. Thank you. Starter on the defensive line. Uh, football Hawk, I would say at this point, when you look at the starting defensive line um, in camp, I would say right now, from left to right, uh, your, your left, uh, your strong side defensive end is going to be Nate Matlock. I think he's done a hell of a job. Uh, he's done a, he's he really elevated his game. He is in a four three defense. He's finally being able to produce because it's his style. Of, it's his style of defense. Uh, obviously, if you don't know, Nate is the transfer defensive end from Kansas State. Obviously, Kansas State I think does a great job. A lot like Pitt, developing talent. They've done a great job uh, developing it, and that's why they've been successful in the Big Twelve and really beating up a lot of teams, especially Texas. Um, beating up on them, uh, but Nate Matlock, and then in the center, I would have Sean Fitzsimmons and Nick James in the middle, or even Nakai Johnson starting, because Nakai Johnson's having a hell of a camp. Obviously, you'll be seeing some young guys get a lot of reps this year. Um, you know, Isaiah Ghost Neal, you'll see him, uh, Elliot Donald, um, you'll see Francis Brayu, Jasir Whittington, you're going to see a lot of guys, and I know I'm missing some guys on the, on the, in terms of the defensive tackles, I'm missing some guys that are there, um, some guys that were on the team last year. I, I keep forgetting the names. Um, but in the middle to start, I would say at this point, Nick James and Sean Fitzsimmons. And then on the other side, obviously, you got Dayon Hayes. I would say that's a great starting defensive line. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that's great about Pitt, they rotate in. So you got to have, you know, you're too deep. Uh, you know, the, the guys backing them up at this point, I would say, you know, you, you obviously have David Ajebwe, uh, the defensive end transfer from Clemson. Uh, he's done a good job. He's still learning the defense. He's still getting to that point. Um, but overall, you still have depth in terms of the defensive line and the defensive end room. Obviously, you still have Bam Brema there. Nate Temple's not in there anymore because of the injury. Um, so I expect you know you may see Pitt go out into the portal. But at this point, Pitt still needs seven or eight guys to leave the team after spring to create room to go before anybody else. So it's going to be tight. You know, you, you have to find team. You have, to, you have to find guys, but more importantly, I'll let you guys use your imagination. Who's not on the two deep that possibly will not be here next year, whether it's on offense or defense. Um, but overall, you look at this room uh, and the defensive line. It's young, but there's a lot of talent. Um, I like the guys that they've brought in. I like the guys that are currently there. Obviously, um, you know, you could see sincere Edwards obviously get a chance to start this year. Obviously, not start but play. Um, we'll continue to see him monitor what his situation is. Um, but it's a it's a talented defensive line. And Charlie Parch, before he left, certainly refilled and stocked that room. That's for sure. Big Steve, I'm bullish on the D-line this year, thinking they'll bounce back in a big way this year. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I, I'm excited to see Tim Dowse and how he coaches him. I'm, I'm excited to see that on Saturday. Uh, I've, I've heard plenty of good things about him. Uh, obviously, a well-known friend of Pat Narduzzi. They've worked with each other for a long time. Uh, dating back to the uh, to Northern Illinois days when Pat Narduzzi was on staff and Tim Doust was a uh, a GA, uh, you know obviously they've known each other. Uh, anybody that I've talked to outside of the program from anywhere he's been um, has known him as a football guy, very high, very intense uh, and very intense defensive line coach, well knowledgeable in terms of what the defensive line looks like, how he wants them to perform. And certainly knows Pat Narduzzi's defense. So we'll continue to see that. I'm excited to see how he coaches and what he looks like um, on uh, on Saturday and how he coaches. That'll be fun to watch. But more importantly, see what does the, the D-line rotation look like? What does it look like from start to finish? Also, too, with the offensive line, who's the starting five when they start it? Um, you know, what does the pace look like? That kind of stuff. We'll be monitoring that. But you still can't take a lot from it. It's only going to be the second scrimmage and – it's a brand new offense. So you can't be, you know, I'll be critical of it, but not too critical. You know, I won't be critical of it till fall because at this point they're still learning this, this offense. They're still learning the pace. Obviously they're much farther ahead than they ever were in terms of a Frank Signetti offense. Um, from what I've heard, this is an easier offense to learn than what Frank was doing, which is great to hear. You know, if it's easy for the players to play and easier for them to learn, they'll certainly play faster and you play faster, you play better, you play better. If you score more, you score more, you win more. It's that simple. Chicken. Mark, I'm tired of the clickbait. Never played, but know it all, know it all band. Debate geeks. Love me some intelligent knowledge. Why I'm a pit and uh, enthusiastic fan. Love the pride. That's all due to JJ. Chicken, again, I appreciate that, man. We're 
always welcome. We're always welcoming new Pitt fans, um, great people. It's one of the reasons why I, I grew up a Pitt fan. Uh, just the community's great. The people are great. You go to games. You, you go to you know any type of event outside of Pitt. Um, just all great people. It's just hands down, easy to know it. Mark, yes, I played at ECU. Real knows real. My man Chicken played the game, baby. How does Pitt get crowds to come out just not for WVU or PSU games? They got to get more people in there. I mean, to be honest with you, Stephen, a report came out and multiple people, and I've said this for a while, from 2018 to now 2023, Pitt is one of the one of the, the one of these schools with over a 20% increase uh, in uh, in attendance. So they continually get better, but also too, Pitt does play in a 70,000 seat stadium. You know, it's not it's not like a lot of these other programs where they're playing in you know in a 40 in a 40,000, 45,000, 50,000 seat stadium. Obviously, West Virginia plays in a 60,000 seat stadium, 10,000 seats less, and they only sell that out when Pitt comes uh, to the stadium. Obviously, when they played, that was like a just like last year. Uh, West Virginia is actually was on that list as a university from 2018 to now who has suffered a, uh, a major decrease in attendance. That's been a problem from them. Um, but Pitt's getting better, but it's very simple. Just continue to win. And last season certainly didn't help, but I expect a rebound this year with a modern offense. And I think Cade Bell is a hell of a hire. Um, Lindsey Lamar, you know, uh, you know, Bronowski, Jacob Bronowski, huge hires. Darvo coming in as, as a guy who knows the offense for the offensive line. Um, just great hires all around, I think. And then J.J. Laster uh, is clearly shown to be an aggressive wide receiver coach. He's going to coach these guys up quite a bit. How does how has the D-line taken to Coach Dallas? From what I've heard, Mike, they love him. They said he's a football guy. He's a relationship guy, a lot like Pat Narduzzi uh, in terms of, you know, very demanding. Uh, there's a certain standard and a certain level when you come to Pitt. It's that simple, uh, especially for D-line play, for the amount of guys who've been drafted out of Pitt. Uh, Charlie Partridge certainly set that standard. Um, but from what I've heard, the players love him. Uh, he's, a, again, a very relationship-driven guy, knowledgeable, um, like any like any other coach, any coaching change. Certain ways, certain different ways how you watch film. Coach two coaches might do two different ways how they watch film. Uh, guys might coach differently. I think one thing that's very noticeable is that, like Charlie Partridge, uh, Tim Douse is very high energy and very demanding, which is a very good thing. You demand the most out of your players because you want the best for them. If you're not demanding a high value and a high return on them, then you're not coaching them and you're not helping them develop. I think Tim Dows is doing that. I think he's doing a good job so far. But, Mike, here's what I can tell you. Uh, next Sunday, when we have the next Sunday conversation, uh, obviously the, the Sunday conversation moved to Monday day because of Easter. Obviously, I was enjoying the holiday uh, with family. Um, and, again, happy Easter to everybody who celebrates it here. Um uh, I will give you more of an update on what it looks like when we're when we're at the game. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but I'm excited, so we'll see what we'll see what it looks like. But I'll get you more of an idea of what it could potentially look like. JJ, actually, I was with you before Jason started. Facts. I love all college football. My man, no way, my dude. I appreciate that, man. Stephen, truth is Oklahoma, Alabama never had pro teams. We don't count b-ball. Our pro teams are are like the universities. Just our cultures. We also know the coaches and players. Exactly. But, but could not name our governor. <laughs> what ceiling from Pitt this year win loss? So the ceiling, um, I, I, I'll say this. I won't put a ceiling on them. I'll put a floor. I would say the floor, I mean, because obviously it's a new offense. The floor would be seven wins, I think. I think when you look at this team, um, it was so close to winning seven games last year from how many one-loss scores they lost by, you know, numerous different games that you watched last year uh, just because the offense was not on the field. But so many one-score games that we had lost, um, I think the floor is seven, seven games. And the reason why is because I'm hearing a lot of good things out of camp. Um, I know it's only camp at this point, but one of the things that's very noticeable, it's, it's a modern-day offense. And I know I've been, I've been saying that, and I'm repetitive in that, um, you know, they're working on the pace. They're, they're certainly working through the kinks of getting into a rhythm, staying in a rhythm and being productive and not, you know, not, not having negative plays and, you know, especially in the run game. Um, but the one thing for sure is I think it's a modern day offense and it's a much more explosive offense. Uh, and you're going to see a quarterback battle all the way to the end. You know, 
to me, this quarterback battle has really come down to, from what we've heard at a camp, is between Nate Yarnell and Eli Holstein. I think Eli Holstein went from third, third on the depth chart to second uh, this past week, obviously passing Christian Veyer. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, what's funny is here, I actually, I'm going to stop sharing here. And I actually have, if I'm not mistaken here, I do. I actually have um, a video here from Cade Bell. So let me give you an idea here what Cade Bell said this week about the quarterback battle and each quarterback on the roster from one to five, all of these guys. I think this will be really good for you guys to see. There we go there. Okay, here we go. All right, so here is what here is what Cade Bell had to say for the quarterback positions on Nate Yarnell, Eli Holstein, Christian Veyer, Ty Diffenbach, uh, Julian Duggar, all these guys who are or who are competing for the job right now, and what he you know what what he sees out of each quarterback and what they're doing well. Uh, I think this is always good to see, and give you guys a thought here. Have you seen Nate specifically grow over these last three, four weeks? Yeah, I mean, he's getting better and better, I think, every day. You know, the thing about Nate is he's a pro. You know, he's in here. Man, I'm, you know, I go home to my wife and to my daughter, um, you know, pretty late, and, and he's he's walking in the building to watch film, you know, up here two or three um, hours a night till about 9 o'clock. You know, um, he's just one of those guys that that is a true leader at quarterback. He loves football. Um, he wants to be great. He doesn't want to just be average. You know, he doesn't just want to win, you know, six or seven games, right? He wants to go to the ACC championship. That's his goals, you know? And so he has that mentality. Um, and, you know, he has that type of, the one thing I love about Nate at practice is that it's never, it's never no one else's fault, right? I think that's what great quarterbacks are is they take responsibility. Hey, it's on me. I got to get it fixed, right? And I think the kids see that, you know, when you got a guy back there that everything's on his shoulders and he's willing to take those responsibilities, it makes everybody else play with confidence because, you know, they know that, hey, he's the leader out there and, and he's going to try to, you know, um, the guy that everybody wants to follow on the field. Yeah, Christian, I'm um, still developing when it comes to just understand, you know, what I want, you know, um, for him, you know, he, man, he has a lot of talent. You know, that's what sometimes frustrating with Christian because y'all, y'all watch it at pro day. I mean, he can absolutely spin it. Right. Um, but, you know, he has to understand, Hey, it's okay to take the ball down. It's okay to take the flats. Right, it's okay to um, just find completions because in this system, man, when the big throws are there, they'll be there, right? And they're going to be open, right? Um, you know, we get guys open. I think that's the biggest thing we do is, you know, we just don't throw the ball up, right? And hope our guys make a play, right? We're going to help them get open. Um, and he just has to understand the process of what I want as the offense coordinator. And he's trying to. He's getting better, um, you know. And I think that's just, you know, for some quarterbacks, I truly feel it's hard when you're, you know, you've been through three or four different offenses, right? You're having to reprogram your reads, reprogram what an offense coordinator wants. Because because when it comes down to it, when I call a play, you want the guy who's pulling the trigger to know exactly why I'm calling that play. What does Coach Bell want out of this play, right? Uh, what does he want to get accomplished? And, you know, that's the process we're in with him right now. Um, uh, young guys, um, Eli Holstein's really taking it to another level. Um, you know, he's gotten better and better and better. Um, very calm, um, operates very well, understands what's going on, a lot like him and Nate. And, um, and he gets the ball of his hands, you know, he knows where to go with it. Um, you know, he's a guy who, he was a little bit behind because he had a hamstring in, in February. So he didn't get a lot of reps um, when they were, um, when we were doing stuff, you know? So for him, he's just gotta be more, um, keep getting reps, just keep keep getting more opportunities yep. experience wise. And then Ty's a guy who, um, you know, he's still a pup, I believe, you know? Um, when it comes to him, you know, he got hurt last year. He broke his collarbone the first week of camp. I think it really hurt him, you know, as a, as a true freshman, right? Um, you know, he didn't get really any reps um, all fall. And so he's basically like a true freshman again. So he's a guy who, you know, getting back used to the college speed, um, you know, really got back to um, throwing the ball um, how he needs to throw, you know, with the injury he had with his shoulder. So we're just trying to develop him to speed up the process, right? Because he has a lot of ability. And Ty's a lot better athlete than people think. Um, I'm trying to get him to understand that, hey, you're a really good athlete. Use it, right? You don't have to just stay in the pocket and, and you know, hey, get out of the pocket, make plays, right? Understand um, that, hey, it's, you can use your athletic ability. And then Duggar's just a baby, you know? Um, he's basically still in high school, um, but he's a guy who, he's always um, paying attention, asks good questions in meetings. Um, and he's a guy who, you see the athletic ability, you know? Um, he just gotta keep developing and speed up the process, right? The game's a lot faster um, at this level than for him. So, so um, but he's a great, great kid and he wants to be good. Say that Nate has a good understanding of what he wants to happen in this offense. 
I would say that Nate understands the offense. Like, he's a guy who knows the offense right now. Like, if you tell him to drop the concepts, the protections, the plays, oh, he's a pro, right? Now, does he understand exactly what I want yet? Nobody does. Does that make sense? Because it's so different. Does that make sense? Like, the way we teach, the way we want to um, read things, the way we get the ball in our hands, right? Like, this is not a stand in there, hold on to it, hold on to it, you know, take sack offense. That's not who we are. Right, uh, we're gonna get the ball out. You know, um, yeah, we're gonna take shots, and when the and the shots are there, right, we're gonna hit them. Right, we gotta hit them when they're there. But when it's not, we gotta understand. Hey, into a blitz, where where does the ball go? Right, like understanding. I think that's the biggest thing. God, I love hearing this. Understand where your hots are at. Does that make sense? So, you know, if they do blitz us on first down, bam, we get a four or five yard gain out second and five. Does that make sense? Instead of throwing an incompletion. So that's just with reps. Understand that. Hey, I, my hots right here on this play. Hey, my hots here. Does that make sense? And he just has to keep repping that and understand that. I mean, if, if you're a Pitt fan, you got to love that. Honestly, I mean, when you look at this, when you look at this offense from the previous year, and you're looking at a guy who you know many many Pitt fans were very happy to see someone younger, but there were many Pitt fans that were very upset, saying, "Hey, we took a guy from Western Carolina. This doesn't make any sense." Look at what he's saying. When you listen to NFL knowledge and, and college football knowledge, he's teaching a lot of NFL concepts. Your hot routes, getting the ball out. That's a lot of NFL concepts. That's a lot of NFL knowledge. We don't, we're not in this offense to have sacks. We're in this offense to, one, if there's a deep shot, we take it. But guess what? If it's not there, we're not going to force it. Boom. We're going to go right to the side. Our hot route's going to be right there. We're not going to take a sack. We're not going to throw an incompletion. We're going to go for at least three to five yards. So boom, it's second down and seven or second down and five. You're seeing a major difference in what this teaching ability is to what previous years were. You're, you're watching a guy who truly loves what he does and has a, an incredible amount of knowledge. And again, one of the things I love to hear what he said there was that, look, they understand the offense, but they don't know what I want yet. Because what he's doing is he's, he's teaching from an outside perspective to where, hey, I want them to understand it first. And when they understand it, that's when I'll teach them, hey, here's why we're doing what we're doing. Here's why I want to make sure you hit that hot route. Why it's there. Why we don't take a sack. Why we don't take a negative play. Why we don't take an incompletion. That's just great, great teaching from a guy that people were upset about that was 30 years old. But this is a guy who loves the game. And one of the reasons why Pat Narduzzi made this hire. I think that I can officially say that, you know, if I had to bet, Mike Yersich was probably going to be the higher at Pitt until Cade Bell really turned up and, and really had one hell of an interview. I, I think I'm confident in saying that to where, you know, this hire wasn't just given to Cade Bell because he's a coach's son like Pat Narduzzi, and he's talked about that before. This is a guy that earned this job, and you're seeing it in, in, in live form. The knowledge this, this man has is clearly being shown, and the guys are learning. And it continues to get better each week, and they're already through a certain amount of install, already over 90% of an install, and there's still two weeks to go. That's a major plus. You're watching guys in a live term truly embrace this offense. One, love it. Uh, one of the things he talked about in that uh, press conference is that they threw it 86 times in reality probably wanted to throw it 60 times but there were times the quarterbacks didn't hand it off and they went for a throw okay so but that's part of learning the offense you're going to watch a pit offense this year that's not scared to co-score points you're not going to watch a, an offense this year that's going to huddle up wait 20 seconds and then and then make sure they get rid of the ball with two seconds left in the play clock it's just not going to happen can they slow it down when it's later on in the game and they're up by multiple scores? Of course. He's talked about that. He's made those adjustments. And I've watched plenty of film between Western Carolina to where I've seen them go fast and I've seen them slow it down. He's not lying. Plenty of tape. Plenty of tape out there that I've watched and I've studied for hours on this offense. That and reason, Many reasons why I like it. But I just think he's a very good coach. I think he's an up-and-coming coach. Anybody that I've talked to that, that knows Cade Bell from the Carolinas, Florida, Florida is a hotbed for him in terms of recruiting. He's done a hell of a job down there. He's got a well-known connections down there. They've talked very highly about him in terms, of especially to developing talent from Florida going up to going up to Western Carolina, but now to Pittsburgh. That that entire pipeline will not stop. 
So that's a very good thing. So some of these comments here. JJ, which college football teams have the longest home sellout? Um, it's a good question. Probably some of the bigger schools. You got Ohio State, Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma. Probably schools like that, I, I would think. Holstein is that dude. I agree, man. And I've watched the tape. I've watched the practice tape. I've watched the Alabama tape. He's he's for real. Love your show, JJ. Keep it up. Thank you so much. And of course, if you haven't done so and you're watching on, on YouTube or you're watching on, on Twitter, if you're on Twitter or whatever it's called, X now, go over to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and like the video. It helps with the algorithm. It gets it out. And more importantly, we get to hear more voices and more opinions on the things we're talking about here. And it certainly helps the dialogue in the comments section. Um, you know, we've got a great group of, you know, great group of, you know, just community here for Talking College Football with JJ Kitchen. I mean, just, I mean, Chicken 151, Will, Steven, Adam, obviously all the parents, the pit football parents that watch this show. I mean, there's just, there's numerous. Football Hawk has done a hell of a job. Mike, you know, he's done a hell of a job in, in being here. Uh, just got, and Mark. I mean, there's just, there's just numerous names going down the list. But if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the channel. We're going to 2,000, and it's going to get really fun. And actually, I can actually tell you here right now, I've done one player interview so far, and that will be released soon. So if you haven't done so, again, subscribe, because I will be releasing that recording um, of a player interview that I've done so far in camp is one. I'm hoping to do at least seven. So there'll be six more after that. But – You'll want to hear this one. Believe me, it's a very good story. Um, if you love football knowledge and you love football IQ and you love a good comeback story, you're going to want to listen to this. So subscribe to the channel and get ready to see that first player interview drop. I wouldn't be surprised if Vayer transfers. He deserves a chance to develop and start somewhere, and it looks like he could be the odd man out. I agree. Uh, I think he deserves a shot to develop. I think he's, again, I agree with K. Bell. I think he's got a lot of talent. And I think when you look at the football out of his hand, he probably has the best spiral of any quarterback on this team out of his hand, and especially with his arm strength. The problem with Bayer, man, is that he just cannot stop the turnovers. And one of the things he talked about, you know, was the fact that he just, you know, he's got to know when to check it down, not always throw deep and put that ball up into play where it could be a turnover and the ball's turned over. It's something we heard at a camp last year. It's something we heard at a camp this year so far. I think that's really what's holding him back is the turnovers. And I think if you talk to any football coach around the country, not just any offensive coordinator, but any head coach, you don't want turnovers. The more turnovers, the, the less chance you have winning. And especially, too, you saw last year how many times we turned the ball over, and it certainly suffered us into losses, especially one-score losses. It just can't happen this year. Uh, and I think Cade Bell knows that, and he's he's really dialed into to the, to the guys he wants to start. If Pitt got Matt Zollers, do you think he would be the best QB in the room and his brother will walk on, on the Pitt team? I don't know if he'd be the best uh, quarterback in the room. He is a hell of an athlete. Uh, he's a hell of a quarterback. I think he is a tremendous, um, uh, a tremendous uh, quarterback. Uh, do I think Pitt lands him? I don't think so. Um, I think you know Pitt's certainly in it. But from what I've heard from from people that I've talked to, I think Penn, Penn State's the lean. Um, but also to uh, Mizzou in Georgia uh, and Alabama got involved a little bit towards the end here. Uh, he went and visited Alabama. He went and visited Missouri. He went back and visited Missouri. I wouldn't be shocked if he ends up in Missouri. He's been there multiple times. Um, uh, I, I probably guarantee you they're offering him a, a good bit of NIL money out of college, out of high school. Um, we'll watch and continue to see how that develops. But I just don't. I, I don't see Pitt winning this one. You know, which is a shame. He's a great quarterback, four-star quarterback in our own backyard, but. Um, we'll see what happens. I certainly hope he does. I think he's a great talent, great young man, great family. I think he fits Pitt's culture. I think he's got talent, uh, especially in this offense. Cade Bell runs. It's a, certainly a pass pro offense. Um, Matt would certainly do well here. And I certainly hope he does consider Pitt strongly. And I hope he does go to Pitt because he would be very good here. I think he would get early playing time, maybe a sophomore year, you know, especially if he's a redshirt freshman, a redshirt sophomore. Um, but it'll be fun to watch. But I just, I, from what I'm hearing right now, I don't expect Pitt to land him. That's just what I'm hearing. I'm a Sooner, and I've heard of Holstein. And we know a thing about quarterbacks. Heupel, Bradford, Landry, Baker, Murray, Hertz, Rattler, Williams, DG. Yeah, we know a good QB. Y'all got one. That's great to hear. And that's, again, that's from an Oklahoma Sooners. You know, Oklahoma Sooner fan heard of Holstein. Obviously, Holstein was recruited by Texas A&M. Decommitted from Texas A&M. Went to Alabama. Was also recruited by Georgia. The, the offer sheet's off the, off the map. 
Obviously, he's got connections at Pitt. Um, this Holstein's a good quarterback, just being honest and watching the film that I've seen. Bell has a lot of swag and knowledge. Nice to hear. I agree, man, that young and he's confident. I love to see that. You want an offensive coordinator that's not conservative. It's, it's offense. We're on the go. And I think that he has done a great job of implementing this so far. But I love the confidence. I love the idea of just, you know, look, we're going we're gonna to step on people's necks. We're going to get after it. We're going to start pushing the ball down the field. We're going to start creating big plays. We want to score more than 30-plus points a game. We want to win by two, three, four scores. You need that type of confidence. I just didn't think we had that. I think Signetti's a good guy, but just to, just living in, in that 1980s Bill Walsh offense is not getting it done, and that's what kind of did him in. Reminds me of Riley when he was at ECU. Good point. Nebraska won Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma. Oh, there you go. Nebraska, of course. It doesn't matter. Nebraska could be 0-10. They would still sell out. Now, obviously, I understand there's nothing in Nebraska. It's all there is is college football and a lot of those towns. But, you know, hey, that's good for them. I, that's still impressive. What's your opinion and understanding of FSU Clemson seeing ACC? I would like clarification. So FSU, they're trying to get out, but they're trying. But they're, in, their, in their lawsuit, they're, they're claiming not to pay anything. And they're wanting like a, a lowered buyout to like $100 million. You still owe five hundred million. There's no way in hell. And from anybody, David McKenzie, who's uh, who's an attorney in North Carolina, talked about it. Said that the Florida State case is very, very weak, and that's why the ACC is pursuing it at a high level. Uh, Clemson's different. Clemson said they don't want to leave the conference. They just want to see what exactly would it take to get out. What exactly would it look like? Um, but they actually talked about how they're still a part of the conference and they don't want to leave. Do I believe that if they had a chance to leave, they'd leave? Here's the problem, though. Look what many people have talked about and Pete Thamel brought up. There's no guaranteed landing spot for Florida State or Clemson if they were to leave. Um, personally, me, in my opinion, the ACC, the largest brand is North Carolina, if I'm being honest. I think that's the largest brand in the ACC. And the ACC is lucky. You know, we have a lot of major brands. You know, I kind of, not to be, you know, facetious towards other you know, conferences, but I laugh at the Big 12 thinking that, you know, they're getting, you know, 40 million, 45 million dollars a year and thinking, well, the ACC will never get that. Well, if you guys are getting that, that has no major brands, it's, it's literally just the, the island of misfits. The ACC could get a lot more, especially with the markets they're in and the viewership and the, and the numbers speak for themselves. The, the ACC has better viewership and the ACC has better brands and better teams. Now that Oklahoma and Texas are gone from the from the Big 12, the Big 12 doesn't have a lot of talent on that side. Just, just how it is. Rusty, I want to thank you for all your support for Coach Phil. I will always be a Pitt fan. Thank you for also to Coach Coach Doozer for giving Phil a chance. Thanks, JJ. Rusty, obviously, if you guys did not see today, I uh, you know this is Rusty. His son is Phil. Phil, obviously, a uh, tremendous football coach. Uh, I, I cannot say enough about how great Phil has done at Pitt. He is a tremendous Pitt man. Uh, he's going to Brown to be the defensive line coach. Uh, obviously a disciple of Charlie Partridge. I mean, if, if you want a mentor, there's nobody better than Charlie Partridge. Um, Phil is a guy who's a tireless worker, tremendous work ethic, and a guy who bleeds the blue and gold. You know, that, that's just that's just how it is. The royal blue and gold. We don't want to be confused with you know, West Virginia, obviously. And we're obviously two different goals, by the way. Look it up. Um, I, I'm just beyond beyond proud of Phil. Rusty, cannot thank you enough for how much you support the channel. Um, beyond happy to hear you're a Pitt fan forever. Uh, love when you, whenever you're on here. I appreciate everything that you did. You raised a, a tremendous son, uh, a guy who's a leader. Doesn't matter where he goes, he will be a benefit to that organization. No matter where he goes, Brown is a lucky school right now. They're getting you know a tremendous defensive line coach uh, that certainly has the knowledge, but also to the recruiting tools to bring in top tier talent and then develops that talent. Um, you know, Phil is just a, a top shelf, a top shelf guy. If you haven't seen it yet, go to my Twitter, JJ underscore kitchen 40. Phil tweeted out uh, a tweet and certainly had a, a lengthy, um, a lengthy thank you and goodbye. Uh, just how he is. Good young man. And, and just, uh, you know, a leader, you know, when we're going to miss him here, Pitt selfishly, I would, for selfish reasons, I, I didn't want him to leave, but for, for real reasons, I'm beyond happy because he's going to a position job. And for people that don't know, when you're going from a you know a graduate assistant or an offensive analyst or defensive analyst to a position 
a position coach, that's big time. You know, Phil's made it big time. He's he's doing a hell of a job. And, uh, man, you know, one day I, I hope he makes it back to Pitt because he's a tremendous coach and he's one of the good ones. And I've said this before to all of you guys. This game, these universities are still about relationships. I understand where we are with NIL. I understand where we are in terms of college football. But a lot like what I do in my business, you know, I'm in banking. Everything's about business. I mean, I understand that. Everything's about money. But I turned down numerous jobs to leave where I was and turned down multiple major pay raises because I felt like that those organizations didn't have as much good people as where I was at First Commonwealth. You know, I, I worked with great people. I'm now at First National. And the biggest thing to me is is relationships because the relationships aren't the, the, the good ones are never transactional. You know, they're they're investments to where they're always there in the future. They're always there in the present. They're they're in the present and they're always going to be in there in the future. They're in the present because it's a gift now. They're in the future because it's a, it's a gift later. Um, and I'm a big guy on relationships. I'm a big guy on loyalty. Uh, and, and Phil meets those requirements. And Rusty and his family just just taught Phil and, and really raised Phil the right way. Um, and beyond thankful for what he's done. You know, and he kind of honestly, he kind of reminds me of uh, a former uh, pit assistant linebacker coach, assistant linebacker coach, Mickey Jacobs. Uh, you know, Mickey Jacobs is another guy. He's a he's a linebacker coach now at Duquesne. Another job he took as a position coach, another big time guy. Um, it, you know, pitch is a really great place um, because of the people. Relationships matter. And I'm, to, to the players that are watching this, because I get DMs on Twitter from players, current players who are at Pitt and players who are in high school that watch this. I understand that you want to take care of your family and you and that's, that, should, that should be your number one priority. But you want to go somewhere that you're loved. You want to go somewhere where you're going to be developed, and you're going to be. Good. You want to go somewhere where you are wanted, that you're not just a number. That they know your name by heart. They care about where your success is, not just on the football field, but in the classroom. That kind of stuff still matters. That kind of stuff should matter regardless. And then you ask about the NIL because you're going to get paid regardless. I'm telling you, relationships truly mean more than what people portray it as. And I still see college athletics, and I understand the NIL where we are. There's some guys that won't, that won't listen until they make mistakes, and they come back and they say, you know, have had, I've had players before, players that have left pit. Oh, I messed up. Yeah, I know you messed up. Do not listen to the agents that want to push money to where they get more in their commissions. Build the relationships with your coaches that are there for the long term. Be a leader in terms of your room. Play with your brothers. Play for them. And play in the game to where you get on the field and you have an opportunity to go play in the National Football League where there's generational wealth. NIL money is not generational wealth. It'll last you. It'll last you two, three, four years. But it'll be gone. The NFL is, is generational wealth. Allow yourself to develop great relationships at the place that you are going, and you will be successful because the money will come. Have the passion for where you are, and you'll truly be successful for where you go because now you've developed those relationships in the long term. People are overlooking NIL at this point saying, well, I just want the NIL. You know, it's all about the NIL. If it's about the NIL, you're going to go somewhere, and if you're there for the NIL, and if you don't perform, you're out. They don't care if you get your degree or not. They don't care how your feelings are. They don't care how you do. Go to a place where you're wanted and you have the relationships. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Like some of the players who have left Pitt and they DM me, they will. And now some of them even have my number at this point because now I try to help them out and go somewhere else. Because I know they won't be back at Pitt. So that's how we do things. J.J. Mizzou passed legislature to pay high school in that state. That goes to a state Mizzou. I know. That was a huge thing. Um, the question I think that they're trying to hold on to is, is they got to keep those guys for a long period of time. A couple guys have left Missouri. They got paid, and then they left. Missouri's got to keep that monthly stipend to where they're, they're keeping them on board for the long term. I think that's the, that's the biggest thing. I am feeling Nick James could be a sneaky good this year. Yes. Obviously, Nick James, the transfer from Indiana University, but was a four-star defensive tackle out of IMG Academy. IMG Academy is legit, guys. <laughs> I can tell you this. If you're coming from IMG, you're a damn good football player. 
I can tell you that. 100%. Right? And Chicken always agrees. That's why he's my man. Thank you for your kind words, Rusty. Not a problem, brother. Again, beyond proud of him, beyond happy for him. And I, you know, I'll be rooting for him from afar. I can tell you that. Oklahoma carried the Big 12 for a decade, seven out of 10 titles, eight either New York Six or playoffs. Big 12 is unfortunately the next Pac 12 ish. I agree, brother. Believe me. No major brands. You know, if anything, I think when it looks, when you look at brands, honestly, in that conference, I think, um, I would put like like West Virginia almost towards it, maybe in the top five. You know, I think Utah is up there, and their fan base is certainly cocky. I can tell you that. Good Lord. Talking to some of the Utah fans. Good Jesus. You would have thought they were Ohio State. Me too. Sorry, JJ. I got to go. Promise, Jason. Of course, chicken. Tell Jason said hello, and I'll be catching up with him and maybe jumping on later. Hi, JJ. Jordan, what's up, brother? Very well said. When do you expect another commitment? Adam, that's a great question. And the answer is, at this point, because for how busy we've been, I have no idea. That's a, that's a, that's a, as honest as I can be at this point. Um, usually, I, I know ahead of time. Uh, I, don't, I will never tweet out a, a commitment um, or ruin a guy's commitment. If he allows me to tweet it out and, and just says, hey, you can give a teaser, I'll do that. But uh, at this point, I don't have one right now. We'll probably get towards the thick of it after um, after spring ball, if anything, I expect probably in June, you're going to see here in a couple months where you're going to see a lot of those June commitments happen, where the magic happens, you get like five to 10 commitments. That's when I would expect really your, your next bet, but maybe, maybe in, in, uh, in May, that's what I think. I'm a little concerned about the size of our interior defensive line. What are your thoughts there? Do you see us bringing another transfer, uh, potentially another transfer? Uh, am I concerned about the size? I think no, and the reason why is because, one, we saw bigger guys last year, and we saw how that D-line, defensive line performed. You know, I think I think Devin Daniels is still a, good, a great football player. I think Tyler Bentley is a great football player. But there were not a lot of plays made. There were not a lot of big action plays made, big explosive plays. Um, we want guys in this defense, the way our scheme works is that we want guys to get vertical, not horizontal. We want guys to play in the backfield to make tackles for loss, sacks, we just didn't have those guys in the middle last year. This year, we got it. So, I, for me personally, I'm fine with the guys being a little bit smaller because, look, Jalen Twyman was a smaller guy, NFL guy. Kalaja Canty, smaller guy, NFL guy. Those two guys are always in there. Obviously, we've had other defensive tackles that have been through in there. Even Shane guys like Shane Roy were really good. Um, plenty of guys that were smaller guys that were really damn good. Um just the bigger guys, man. I just think we're getting this. You know, unless they're like a guy from like Georgia or something where they're big and fast, you kind of want to be on the wayside of, of the guys that are big. You want guys that can be twitchy uh, and get off blocks. That, that's the biggest thing. And I guess it's kind of what they have with, you know, Jalen Twyman and obviously, uh, you know, Kalijah Canty. Those are two notorious names, obviously, that have been to the system that have been smaller. So I'm not really concerned. I think, if anything, I like how they're going back to being smaller and just getting guys that are athletic. That's what it really comes down to. Okay, let's see here. Obviously, um, if I'm not mistaken here, I thought I had another video up here. Maybe I don't. Sean Fitzsimmons, Derek Davis, Cruz Brookins. I don't have those videos up here right now, but... Uh, we'll take a couple more questions. We'll take a couple more questions, and then I'll probably get for tonight. Again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, subscribe to the channel. If you're on X, head over to YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications. We'll be dropping a player interview very soon. Uh, it's been recorded. Just putting it, to, putting it together, and then I'll be able to release it. And obviously, too, like the video. If you have not done so, like the video. Um, and appreciate everyone that always does a great work here in supporting the channel. So, guys, I don't think there's – Maybe one more here. How are Western Carolina transfers looking? This is a great question. So Carolina, so for instance, uh, Poppy Williams, Raphael Poppy Williams had himself a day. If you have not seen the plays from Raphael Poppy Williams, um, I suggest you do. And let me see, let me see if I can actually pull it up here. Um, he had himself an over the over the back catch. And see if I can actually pull it up here to show you guys. It's a tremendous play. He's going to be a guy that's going to get time this year. Uh, certainly has the talent. Oh, yeah, here we go. All 
Let me share my screen with you guys here. Let me see. Hide this. Hide this. Present. Share. All right, here we go. I'm going to play this a couple times for you guys. Watch this play. Watch this play again. It's just Raphael Poppy Williams transfer from San Diego State, but didn't play last year, but was from Western Carolina. Knows his offense like the back of his hand. Watch this. Look at that catch. That's a hell of a catch. I mean, those are the plays that you're going to be seeing more and more of. C.J. Lee has done a really good job. Uh, Desmond Reed, obviously, in the running back room. He's done a great job. And, again, just got to watch this. Just, uh, just tremendous body work whenever you're being able to catch this ball. I mean, that's something. If I can just stop this playing now. do 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 so, yeah, I mean, Rafael Poppy Williams had himself a hell of a scrimmage. He's had himself a hell of a camp. A uh, guy who's a crisp route runner, does a great job with his hands, very violent with his hands in terms of getting off press coverage. Uh, but tremendous route running, but speed, man. These guys are known for speed. C.J. Lee doing a really good job so far this camp. Again, a guy, crisp route runner, was a freshman All-American and, and FCS wide receiver of the year. Um, he's another guy that's been doing really well. Also, too, Desmond Reed in the running back room. He's done a really good job, uh, tremendous job on his end. I think Desmond Reed's done a good job helping coach the guys up in the running back room too, uh, getting them on board. Uh, Desmond Reed will be a guy that gets a lot of playing time this year too. Just I, I call him like a fire hydrant, but he's got tremendous speed too. I think in the running back room, it's probably the two guys who are the fastest are probably Derek Davis and Desmond Reed. All right, and who threw it to him? That was Christian Veyer. That was Christian Veyer who threw it to him up there. So, guys, again, I am beyond thankful for everything you guys do for the channel. You guys continue to support the channel, and I'm beyond thankful for everything you guys do. Again, we rent over 1,000 subscribers. Our job is to go to 2,000 subscribers. If you have not done so, subscribe to the channel. If you're on X, head over to YouTube, subscribe, hit notifications, play your interview going to be dropping. Um, and, again, beyond thankful for everything you guys do um, in supporting the channel. I will let you guys know. When we will be meeting at Permanis in South Fayette, um, again, a larger, a larger Permanis, probably the largest Permanis I've ever seen. Um, we'll be meeting there. I'll be dropping that on Twitter, on my Twitter, JJ underscore Kitchen 40. Also, too, on YouTube, I'll create a post. So you'll get notified if you are subscribed to the channel. You'll get notified. Guys, again, beyond thankful for everything you guys do. Stay safe out there. Pit football, it's coming back. And guess what? If you're at the spring, if you're at the scrimmage on Saturday or at the spring game, I will be at both. If you are there, you're more than welcome to stop up and say hello to me. I would love to love to meet you and have a conversation and get to talk to you. Guys, can't wait to see you guys at the spring game or the scrimmage or Permanis in the future at our meet and greet at the Talking College Football with JJ Kitchen Community Meet and Greet. Guys, as always and forever, Hilda Pitt. I'll see you guys next time.